Hello, music lovers, and welcome once again to the showroom sessions where we present wonderful music streaming live from Piedmont Piano Company right here in Oakland, California. My name is Jim Callahan. I'm the president of Piedmont Piano Company, and this evening we're very thrilled to have Frederick Hodges playing the music of George Gershwin. But before we start, let me tell you about some upcoming shows, uh, wonderful shows here in January to start off the new year. Uh, this Thursday, it'll be uh, Lydia Pence um, uh, playing uh, blues, Lydia Pence, of course, of Cold Blood fame. Um, on the 21st, Aki Kumar will be here. This is uh, blues from India. Check it out if you haven't before, Aki Kumar. On the 24th, Kev Choice will be here, Oakland Zone. And on the 28th, the Cosmo Alley Cats for some great swing music. Uh, and more great shows coming up in February. Mitch Woods will be here. Uh, Maria Muldar with her special Valentine, Valentine's Day show for lovers. And uh, Omar Sosa will be making a special appearance. Uh, so, uh, and many more shows are coming up too. Uh, to find out about everything that's uh, coming up, uh, you can join our email list uh, by going to um, our website, music at piedmontpiano.com, and sign up for emails. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram or Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We always want to remind you that uh, we have lots of pianos for sale uh, here in the new year. Lots of wonderful instruments are coming in to our inventory, uh, both new and used. So if you've been uh, uh, over to see us recently and didn't find what you like, uh, come back again because uh, we've got a lot of new and wonderful and interesting uh, instruments in. And we are open by appointment, so uh, let us know uh, if you need an upright or a grand, a digital or acoustic piano, uh, new or used. Uh, we have them all, and uh, we'll help you find just what you're looking for. Now, uh, before we start the show, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, we're asking for donations. Of course, all of our uh, pre presentations in the showroom sessions are free, but we ask for donations for the musicians uh, tonight for Frederick Hodges. Uh, Frederick and so many other musicians that we know uh, don't have any live gigs, have all been canceled during the pandemic, and so we want to do everything we can to help. You'll see the links on your screen uh, where you can donate to uh, Frederick, so leave a generous tip, please, um, and 100% of anything you donate goes directly to Frederick Hodges this evening. Uh, so um, it's time to start the show. Uh, it's uh, been uh, some number of years uh, since a 19-year-old youngster wandered into Piedmont Piano Company um, and he sat down and started playing uh, amazing music, music of the 20s and 30s that I was very familiar with and I was amazed at what he was doing and I said, how did you learn that? He said, well, I've been listening to some records and I just like this kind of music. Well, it wasn't long before um, uh, he had been introduced to some of the um, more... Uh, illustrious uh, vintage music specialists around the Bay Area, and uh, the rest is history. Uh, Frederick has uh, played all over the world and is claimed for his uh, amazing playing and renditions of this uh, particular type of music that not many people are playing anymore. So uh, without further ado, let's give him a virtual warm welcome uh, playing the music of George Gershwin. Here's Frederick Hodges. Enjoy!
all. That, as you all know, was I Got Rhythm, the mega hit that George and Ira Gershwin wrote for Ethel Merman to sing in the 1930 Broadway musical Girl Crazy. Ethel played Frisco Kate, a hard-bitten, tough-as-nails nightclub singer who closed the first act of the show with that rousing number. By 1930, Gershwin had become one of the country's most celebrated and respected composers, but his musical genius found full expression from the very beginning of his professional career in 1916. A close exploration of any phase or stage of his musical expression will be richly rewarded. While his style of composition changed with the times, he was always a leader in the musical style and innovation, guiding the way toward greater sophistication and richness in popular music composition. We can prove this by exploring some of his early successes, each of which is remarkable for its ingenuity, originality, and charm. On September 29, 1920, the Winter Garden Theater in New York City was the site of the opening night of a new musical review, George Lemaire's Broadway Brevities of 1920. The show starred Burt Williams and Eddie Cantor and featured songs by numerous up-and-coming composers such as Irving Berlin and Walter Donaldson. Prominent among these young contributors was, of course, a 22-year-old George Gershwin who submitted four songs to the production. In the first act of the review, the Broadway luminaries Edith Haller and Hal Van Rensselaer performed an elaborately costumed number set in picturesque Spanish Village Square. Featuring a new song by George Gershwin with lyrics by Irving Caesar, the song is appropriately called Spanish Love. Turning, my heart has been burning for months. I've been yearning for Spanish love in Spain. I know that the place is a lover's oasis where gay Spanish faces will smile at me again. Spanish love, my heart's a ball of fire. Spanish love. Volcano of desire If your cares and worries You would banish Learn to live and love Just like the Spanish Spanish love For every girl and boy Has made a land of joy It fills you It thrills you it chills you, it nearly kills you. Spanish love, there's none I think more of than my own Spanish love.
In considering the great annual review shows of the 1920s, George White's scandals ranks together with the Ziegfeld Follies as the most elaborate and trend-setting. George White hired George Gershwin to be the composer for his second annual review of 1920, whose star was the petite dancer Anne Pennington. The show opened in New York City on June 7, 1920, at the Globe Theater, where it played until October before engaging on a successful national tour that lasted until the following year. The first act closed with a comedy burlesque of a presidential convention with comedian George Bickle doing a hilarious imitation of William Jennings Bryan, who, as you all know, did attend the Democratic Convention of 1920 in the hope of becoming nominated as the Democratic candidate. Anne Pennington played a female presidential candidate who closes and shocks the convention with a spectacular production number featuring herself and a chorus of beautiful girls singing Gershwin's masterpiece of revolutionary harmonic innovation, Scandal Walk. <laughs>
Producer Morris Guest hired George Gershwin to write a score full of exotic atmosphere songs for his new review, The Morris Guest Midnight Whirl, which was staged at the Century Grove, the Roof Garden Theater atop the Century Theater in New York City. The show opened quite late in the season on December 27th, 1919, and played through March 1920, after which it went on a national tour. The review also opened quite late in the sense that the curtain went up at 11.30 at night. After the curtain had gone down in the main theater downstairs, the show featured lavish sets designed by Joseph Urban, the brilliant Viennese-born designer affiliated with both the Metropolitan Opera and the Ziegfeld Follies. Buddy De Silva and John Henry Mears, the manager of the Century Grove, provided the book and the lyrics. As part of the national craze for Orientalism and chinoiserie, one of the numbers Gershwin wrote took place in the notorious and colorful London underworld district of Limehouse. This is the same waterfront spot depicted in the famous 1922 song, Limehouse Blues. It was introduced by the dancing star, Bessie McCoy Davis, who was dressed as a Chinese man. I now present for your enjoyment, George Gershwin's Limehouse Nights. Wonderful sights, charming days and dark, mysterious nights. But in the London slums, just as the twilight comes, there is a captivating rendezvous. It is known as Limehouse everywhere. Dreamers go to seek forgetfulness there. Its women quickly fade, its worthless men have made Limehouse nights wonderful the whole world through. Limehouse nights, where the hoppies glide to and fro. Limehouse nights, neath the lantern lights, softly glowing, many people dwell within its mystic spell. From the world of care, they're free. The lure of lime, how's nights? And its soothing sights are calling me.
Although Swanee was published in late 1919, it achieved its mega-hit status in early 1920. Almost overnight, Gershwin was elevated to being one of the most highly sought-after composers on Broadway. Of the many shows he wrote in 1920, one of the most charming was Dear Mabel, based on a best-selling comic book. That is not to say a comic book with lots of pictures, but a book of comedic value by Edward Streeter about an amiable but orthographically challenged small-town World War I private named Bill Smith, who writes his girl back home a series of letters describing his humorous experiences in boot camp and in combat in France. In the musical version, Private Bill, played by film star Louis Benison, returns home a celebrated war hero, but experiences hardship in his return to life as a shop clerk. In the most tender scene of the show, a disillusioned Bill sings a song to his faithful dog, Harold. Lyricist Irving Caesar teamed up with Gershwin to produce this musical number. In so many ways, Gershwin broke new ground and revolutionized music. It should therefore not surprise us that he wrote the world's best love song to a dog. Every place we went, you were as true as true could be. When the nights were bleak and we felt tired and weak, I have known there's lots of things that you would say to me if you could only speak. I want to tell you I feel that our friendship is real. Dear pals, a couple of pals, a couple of true pals, that's what we are. We've been through thick and through thin, both traveling side by side, far and wide, land or sea, there were we most times, we'd no place to go. But I never worried with you alone Though there is no way for me to show to you The heaps and heaps of gratitude I owe to you Don't fret, I owe you a debt I'll never forget, we're a couple of good old pals. The 
heaps and heaps of gratitude I owe to you. Don't fret, I owe you a debt. I'll never forget we're a couple of good old pies. After a few months of out-of-town tryouts, a smart new musical comedy called The Sweetheart Shop premiered to rave reviews in Chicago at the Illinois Theater on April 11th, 1920. Four months later, on August 31st, 1920, the Knickerbocker Theater in New York City was the venue for the opening performance of the New York run of The Sweetheart Shop. While most of the music was written by Viennese composer Hugo Felix, during early town tryouts, the producer, Edgar McGregor, asked up-and-coming 22-year-old George Gershwin to write something uplifting, cheerful, and bright for the lead ingenue, Helen Ford, to sing at a key part of the drama. George asked his brother, Ira, to write the lyrics, but Ira was concerned that McGregor would turn the song down if he learned that the brother of the composer had written the lyric. So Ira created for himself the pseudonym of Arthur Francis, based on the names of his two other siblings, his brother Arthur and his sister Francis. When McGregor asked George, who is this Arthur Francis? The composer Riley replied, he's a clever college boy with lots of talent. The song was Ira Gershwin's first published song. Within a year, it had earned him $1,300. Following its Broadway run, the Sweetheart Shop went on a national tour and delighted audiences all over the country. Gershwin's song was singled out as one of the very best in the show. I now present for you, Waiting for the Sun to Come Out. The skies are filling and the songbirds stop their trilling. Don't take it too hard, let worry depart. Soon the sunshine will say howdy and the skies were not forever cloudy. Just learn to sing and never mope. There is a thing that's known as hope. Weary are the flowers, dreary are the hours waiting for the sun to come out. Yet while clouds are crying, I smile, never sighing, for I know that presently the sun will come and smile on me. Gray skies will be clearing, gay skies soon appearing, chasing every worry and doubt. There's no use in having sorrow about while waiting for the sun to come out.
Puccini's 1904 opera, Madame Butterfly, brought excitement and inspiration to that portion of the musical world known as Tin Pan Alley. The composers of popular songs were intrigued by the tragic tale of Cho Cho's son, the Japanese girl who falls in love with and marries a visiting American Navy lieutenant, who then abandons her to return to America soon after their wedding, leaving her to scan the horizon, vainly awaiting his return. An entire genre of popular songs emerged to capitalize not only on the public's fascination with the tale, but also to highlight American society's enchantment with all things Oriental, including all things Japanese, an artistic movement called Japoneserie. Songs like Poor Butterfly led the trend. But in the end of December 1920, after they had fulfilled their contracts to write songs for a large variety of Broadway shows, George Gershwin and lyricist Irving Caesar stepped forward and offered their contribution to the crowded field of Madame Butterfly-inspired songs. Their contribution, entitled Yankee, adhered to the basic story, but jumped ahead of the crowded field through its imaginative harmonies and especially its unexpected use of the blues scale. This was the first time that Gershwin had used the scale, a musicological feature that would soon come to define his compositional style. Irving Caesar's lyrics are certainly clever, and like so many songs of the era, they do contain numerous locutions meant to replicate the speech patterns of someone whose native tongue is something other than English. The second chorus even contains a sentence in a foreign language that turns out to be Cantonese rather than Japanese. We may also note that the Japanese girl in Yankee is named Nanki Su. Now, I suppose that the first impulse of my audience is toward compassion and sympathy for the errors and cultural misconceptions of our less enlightened predecessors. None of the Tin Pan Alley lyricists seem to have had the ability to distinguish between Chinese and Japanese names. Perhaps Irving Caesar did not give the distinction a second thought, because for the people of his day, all of the cultures of the Orient were inextricably blended together in a swirling kaleidoscopic, kaleidoscopic vision of previously unimaginable glory and beauty. Nevertheless, I now invite you to enjoy an unvarnished and compassionate glimpse into a forgotten world of American musical enthusiasm. Now listen to this tale of love in old Japan between a Yankee man and Nanki Sue. Miss Nanki loved her Yankee just as few girls can. This American traveling man loved Nanki too. Will you marry me, said Nanki Sue, with a pretty geisha smile. I want very much to marry you, won't you settle down a while? He stayed a while and then one day he said goodbye. So now poor Nanki's crying. Yankee, since you go away. Sit all day and pray Pray you please leave American shore Yankee come back For I know can walk I know can talk I know can even sing All night I weep I know can sleep I know can anything if you say no, come back to me, then I go fly to my Yankee.
This little maid could not believe he'd ever go. She thought he loved her so, and he was true. Now like poor butterfly, her heart is full of woe. Everybody in Tokyo knows why she's blue. When they heard her cry one day, they said, write to him and he'll return. Though she couldn't spell a single word, she decided she would learn. Now just imagine how he must have felt to read this note from Nanky. And multiply by three Which makes it clear While you're not here I'm sad as I can be If Yankee no come back to me Then I go fly to my Yankee One corner of the world that opened its heart to the music of George Gershwin was the German-speaking regions of Central Europe. Here, his songs were given, some of the, given to some of the leading lyricists of the day for translation. Take the case of the 1924 song, Oh Lady Be Good, one of the hit shows, songs from the show Lady Be Good, which starred Fred and Adele Astaire. The lyrics for the German language publication of the song were a collaborative effort by the famous Viennese composers Fritz Rotter and Otto Stransky. Now, I consider myself extremely fortunate to have such a sophisticated, educated, and worldly audience. As such, I am sure you will appreciate the wit, clever wordplay, and poetic allusions in the Viennese version of O oh Lady Be Good. I am sure you will be as amused as Ira Gershwin was by the fact that Rotter und Stransky made no attempt to translate Ira's original English lyrics and instead spun their own musical fantasy about a young lady named Anna Maria who was rather good at keeping late hours with her beau named Otto. I give you was will denn bloß der Otto von dir? Was hast du in letzter Zeit, o oh Anna Marie, gemacht? Das hätt ich von dir doch nie, o oh Anna Marie, gedacht. Könnt du bist so schrecklich faul und ich weiß warum. Übs nicht fleißig mit dem Paul, der Otto macht dich mal dumm. Was will denn bloß der Otto von dir? Was will er von dir so oft? Er war bei dir bis dreiviertel vier. Was hat er bei dir erhofft? Was hat ihr getrieben? Ich hört euch stundenlang nicht üben, drum frag ich, was hat denn sonst der Otto bei dir bis dreiviertel vier gemacht?
Hier sitzt mancher arme Gauch und schaut so verdrossen aus. Höchstwahrscheinlich hat der auch eine Anna Marie zu Haus. Kinder, macht euch nicht daraus, sowas kommt doch vor. Und drum brause durch das Haus ein kräftiger Männerchor. Was will denn bloß der Otto von dir? Was will er von dir so oft? Er war bei dir bis dreiviertel vier. Was hat er bei dir erhofft? Was habt ihr getrieben? Ich hört euch stundenlang nicht üben. Drum frag ich, was hat denn sonst der Otto bei dir bis dreiviertel vier? Gemacht. Fascinating Rhythm is one of the enduring hit songs from Lady Be Good. That remains one of Gershwin's most iconic melodies. The show had its Broadway debut on December 1st, 1924 at the Liberty Theater where it played for 330 performances before going on a national tour. In the spring of 1926, it opened with its original London stars in, well, with its original New York stars in London. Fascinating, Ribbon, Fascinating Rhythm debuted in its first act of the show at a garden party at the lavish Rhode Island estate of Josephine Vanderwater, a rich society matron who was trying to force Fred Astaire's character, Dick Trevor, to marry her. Cliff Edwards arrives at the party as the hired entertainment and launches into fascinating rhythm and is soon joined by both Fred and Adele Astaire who perform an elaborate dance routine that George Gershwin himself helped choreograph. Fred and George had been friends since 1916, at least. In his biography, Fred remarked, I like to watch George dance. It made me laugh. Had such a remark been spoken by anyone else, it might be open to a variety of interpretations. But since Fred Astaire said it, it can only be a compliment. Please enjoy Fascinating Rhythm. through my brain so darn persistent the day isn't distant when it'll drive me insane comes in the morning without any warning and hangs around me all day I'll have to sneak up to it someday and speak up to it I hope it listens when I say fascinating rhythm you've got me on the go fascinating rhythm I'm all a quiver what a mess you're making the neighbors want to know why I'm always shaking just like a fliver each morning I get up with the sun Start on hopping, never stopping To find at night no work has been done I know that once it didn't matter But now you're going strong when you start to patter I'm so unhappy Won't you take the day off? Decide to run along somewhere far away off And make it snappy Oh, how I long to be the man I used to be Fascinating rhythm, won't you stop picking on me? Thank you. 
Following the success of Lady Be Good, the same creative team produced another hit show called Tiptoes, about a sweet dancer played by Queenie Smith, who was cajoled by a pair of vaudevillians and opposing as a rich debutante in order to trick a Palm Beach millionaire into marrying her so that they can all gain financial security. Tiptoes is unwilling to go through with the deception after she meets Steve, a plainly dressed boy who loves her just as she is. Unfortunately, after a car accident brings on a state of amnesia, Tiptoes is made to believe that she really is a rich debutante. Eventually, after much rigmarole, she regains her memory, ends the charade, and excitedly accepts the marriage proposal of her true love, Steve, the penniless boy, who in the end turns out to have been a millionaire all along. Tiptoes, the show, opened on Broadway on December 28, 1925 at the Liberty Theater. After a successful run, it made a national tour and following in the footsteps of Lady Be Good, opened in London on August 13, 1926. Unlike Lady Be Good, however, Tiptoes enjoyed further success in Europe, where it premiered in a French language version in Paris on April 27, 1929, at the Folie Vagram Theatre. This version starred Lulu Egoburu and Adrien Lamy as Tiptoes and Steve. These two stars of the Parisian stage had just finished a stellar run with the French version of another American musical comedy, No No Nanette. I now give you the show's biggest hit, That Certain Feeling, the love song that Tiptoes and Steve sing to one another to confess their mutual love. I offer it, however, as it was presented in Paris by Lulu Egoburu and Adrien Lamy. Dans mon cœur comme un voleur Par votre baiser Vous m'avez su griser Et j'ai senti comme un frisson Qu'est-ce donc C'est un sentiment Qui naît doucement Un trouble imprévu Qu'on n'a pas connu Un rêve émouvant Qui ne déçoit jamais c'est un cœur pur qui vous le promet C'est un sentiment qui naît doucement Et surgit toujours à l'aube du jour Si beau mais si court où l'on fait sa cour Cette chose serait l'amour
C'est un sentiment qui naît doucement Un trouble imprévu qu'on n'a pas connu Un rêve émouvant qui ne déçoit jamais Quand c'est un cœur pur qui vous le promet C'est un sentiment qui naît doucement Elle surgit du jour à l'aube du jour Si beau mais si court Où l'on fait sa cour Cette chose c'est l'amour In 1926, the winning production team that captivated Broadway with shows like Lady Be Good and Tiptoes came together again to produce another successful musical comedy called OK, which starred the English actress Gertrude Lawrence. This show, with a book by Guy Bolton and P.G. Woodhouse, incorporated all the classic themes of 1920s musical comedies, a Long Beach mansion, rum running, bootlegging, comical English aristocrats, gold diggers, mistaken identity, and hapless millionaires. In the second act, one of the rum runners, Larry Potter, played by the dancer Harland Dixon, tries to impress and cheer up a bevy of beautiful girls by offering to sing a red-hot mama song. Even though the girls insist that they do not want to hear the song, he nevertheless launches into the wonderful all singing, all dancing Gershwin production number, Clap Yo Hands.
In the silent film era, the big city cinemas provided audiences with elaborate live stage shows before the movies. These were called prologues. On October 24th, 1919, the Capitol Theater in New York City opened its doors for the first time. It had a seating capacity of 5,230 seats. It remained the largest and most glamorous movie palace in New York for decades. The movie shown at this opening night was His Majesty the American, starring Douglas Fairbanks. The lavish prologue that preceded the movie was produced by legendary Broadway impresario Ned Wayburn. It was called The Demitasse Review. That same fall, young George Gershwin wrote Swanee with his friend Irving Caesar as an independent song, not specifically for a stage production. Ned Wayburn happened to hear Gershwin play it during a break at the rehearsal of the Ziegfeld Midnight Frolic. George was employed there as the rehearsal pianist. Wayburn loved it and asked if the song could be used in the Demi Tasse Review. The first staging of the song was impressive. Six chorus girls sang it accompanied by twinkling lights attached to their shoes. Yet for all that, the song seemed to make little impact. A few weeks later, however, Al Jolson heard Gershwin play it at a party. Jolson asked if he could interpolate Swanee into his show Sinbad, which was then playing at the Crescent Theater in Brooklyn. Jolson recorded the song on January 8th, 1920. By the end of January, the song had become, according to advertisements, the most sensational vocal instrumental and dance number released for professional use in months. Touring in Sinbad, Jolson sang Swanee in scores of cities around the country. Within a year, the song had topped sheet music sales of a million copies. The Jolson recording alone sold two million copies that year, bringing celebrity and riches to its authors. Swanee would remain the biggest selling song of Gershwin's career. Swanee was not only a success in the United States, but also in Europe. In 1920, it was introduced in France by the American singing star Harry Pilzer in the Parisian show Paris qui Jazz. Pilzer, by the way, was a classmate of Fred Astaire's at the Claude Alvien Stage Dancing and Dramatic School in New York in 1905. He was also the professional dancing partner of the French superstar Gabby Delise, until 1920, that is, when she, like millions of unfortunate people that year, died in the Spanish flu pandemic. Paris qui jazz was produced at the famous Casino de Paris theater and starred Mistanguette, who at the time was the highest paid female entertainer in the world. Famous for her beautiful legs, she had them insured in 1919 for 500,000 francs. Albert Villametz and Jacques Charles provided the French lyrics for Swanee. They also wrote most of the other songs in the show, including the enduring hit Mon Homme, known in English as My Man. As my final number of this concert, I now present for your edification the original French version of Swanee. Il n'est pas rivière natale Au monde un fleuve qui te voile Pas un cours d'eau, pas un ruisseau Pour moi n'est aussi beau J'ai parcouru toutes les rives Mais vers la tienne quand j'arrive Quelle senteur, quelle fraîcheur Soudain baigne mon cœur Doux rivage vers ton bras, ma jolie Soignie, de te revoir enfin. Quel bonheur dit, va, à part quel lien tu me retiens, Soignie, oriente qui serpente, ma jolie Soignie. Je me souviens, vers toi je reviens, ma Soignie, vers toi je reviens. Soigny, Soigny, j'attends ta voix qui m'appelle. Soigny, Soigny, ta douce voix mon sorcelle.
Voici le baobab immense Sous qui s'abrite mon enfance Les bananiers, les cotonniers Je suis émerveillé Fini ma lointaine aventure Ah, gardez-moi, je vous conjure Vers vous, j'accours Et pour toujours Vous êtes mes amours Soigny de rivage Vers ton bras, Ma jolie soigny De te revoir Enfin Quel bonheur divin À part quel lien tu me retiens Soigny Oriente qui serpente Charmante soigny Je me souviens Vers toi je reviens Ma soignée vers toi, je reviens. What a beautiful performance. Thank you, Frederick Hodges and the music of George Gershwin. Now, the links are still up. If you haven't donated already, please give generously. Um, musicians uh, at this difficult time need all the help they can get from people like you. And 100% uh, of all donations uh, this evening will go directly to Frederick, and he could use it. So uh, thanks very much uh, for that. And we'll see you next time. It's going to be this coming Thursday. Lydia Pence of Cold Blood fame uh, will be uh, here with a wonderful blues show, uh, and um, we will see you then. If you want to learn about our upcoming shows and you're not on our email list, please join by going to our website, piedmontpiano.com. You can also uh, uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and please uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube page. Um, so, uh, time to say so long. My name is Jim Callahan for, and for the showroom sessions and Piedmont Piano Company. My co-producer is Jordan Perlman and our on-site engineer, the talented Noah Hendricks. So, uh, we will see you this coming Thursday. Until then, so long. <laughs>